What's going on fellow game developers? My name is Muddy Wolf and today we are continuing our 2D top-down shooter tutorial. In this video we are going to be adding an enemy spawner to our game. So currently the game has a player and a enemy but the enemy is just on his own um, and after we shoot him a few times he ends up getting dead uh, and alive destroyed uh, and yeah we want to actually add in a spawner so they continuously spawn so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to delete the current enemy and just for the just so we're not right at the edge i'm just going to put our player near the middle of the game we're then going to add another node and i'm just going to put a node 2d because we just need a positional node and we're going to call this the enemy spawner we are then going to add in some child node 2ds um, which we are going to just place around. We're going to call this spawn point. And I'm going to just turn on grid snapping to make this a little easier. And let's just configure this to be something like for the 32 by 32, just to make it a little bit less overwhelming. And our first one is going to go in this corner here. We're then going to duplicate it and move it to each corner. Now you can lay these out a bit better than I have. I'm just sticking them in the corner so I can just so we you know I just feel like enemies coming from the corners is fine but if you're building a big layout you probably want to put a spawner in certain locations now the next thing we want to do is actually create a new script for our enemy spawner now we're gonna be using c sharp we can just use that as, uh, leave that as default and then let's just set our scripts into our script folder and click open now let's just click create and then we should be able to open this up in Visual Studio Code. I'm just going to delete everything at the start here and I'm just going to wait for IntelliSense to actually kick in here. It may take a moment and there we go. This should all be good now. There you go. When that turns red, you know it's all working fine. So the next thing we want to do is we want an export function, which is going to be a uh, packed scene. And this is just going to be called the enemy scene like this. We then want to export a nuffer um we want to export a node 2d array and we are going to call this our spawn points finally we want to export a flow and this one is going to be called eps and we're going to set this to 1f by default this is enemies per second so this is going to be the float that controls um how many enemies spawn every second so one means only one enemy will spawn this will be two three four and you could do 1.5 so they spawn uh one and a half so it, it won't exactly be one every second. It'll be like one every, or one and a half every other second. It, 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 it makes sense. Trust me, there's a timer, basically. This is counts down. We then want a, another float, which just can be a, we're going to call this spawn rate. Now, this is just a calculation we have to do. Uh, and we're just going to use the on ready method. So we need to create a public override ready method here. And then inside of here, we just want to say spawn rate is equal to one divided by EPS. Now, this will give us the exact time we need to spawn each enemy per second. Let's just move that as well. Let's also let's zoom in. I apologize that was too zoomed out. Let me zoom that in for you as well. Now, we want one last private flow, which is going to be time until spawn. And this is going to be the counter, which uh, tells us well, which is going to be when every... This is going to be the timer that just basically says once this goes down to zero, it's time to uh, restart and spawn another. So what we want to do is create another public override void process. This always cuts out for some reason the actual word here when I, when I use IntelliSense to do that. But here we go. So in here, we want to say if our time until spawn is less than our spawn rate then we want to create a spawn function which we will call um, and set our time until spawn back to zero else we are just going to say time until spawn is plus equal to our delta which we have to cast to a float so casting just converts whatever this value is to a new value if it's possible so a double is essentially the exact same as a float but there's two different ways to um 
basically call it and unfor well unfortunately process passes a double whereas we want to use float it floating point numbers so i just convert these over from double to float and that will basically make it a float value if that doesn't make too much sense uh, let me know and i'll try and cover it in further detail in the future um, and then let's just create a uh, void spawn let's just call it a private void spawn um, so inside of our spawn function, we want to get a random number generator, call it RNG. So this just generates a random, it's just a class used for generating random pseudo numbers. It says here in the description, but it basically just helps get random numbers for us. And we're just going to say a new random number generator. We are then going to set our far, oh sorry, our vector 2. And we're going to call this location and set this equal to spawn points. And then we are actually going to use our RNG dot random percent percent. And then we're going to get spawn points dot length dot global position like this. Now, what it is going to do, oh, don't forget your semicolons at the end there. So this is just going to get us a random number between one and zero. And this should give us a random one of the spawn points locations. We then want to get, we then want to actually get our enemy. We then want to get an enemy and just call this enemy and set it to our enemy, oh, enemy scene dot instantiate once again we just want to cast this to uh enemy this just because this is what we are going to be using we then want to say enemy dot gl global position is equal to the new location we have here and then we can just say get tree dot root dot add child and we can add our enemy to the scene back in our main game if we go back to our enemy we just need to build the dotnet project so let this run then you can see we actually have all our things up here so the first we want to do is part in our enemy scene we then want to add this to four and then we want to go in here and just assign each point to a random one of these and then enemies per second, let's just put this two enemies per second so we can see it working a lot quicker and hit play. And here you go, you can see we are getting enemies coming in super fast. Now they're really tough because I forgot to downgrade them because in the last one we made them have a lot more health. So let's just drop their health down to something like 20 to give us two hit points to actually destroy them. And let's go back to our main game and just change the enemy spawner to be back to one enemy per second. And here you go. Now we get an enemy coming at us trying to destroy our player or our, our little character here. And that's essentially an easy top down shoot. Now you can expand upon this game by adding in an actual end screen, um, some sort of point system for how many you have killed um, and stuff like that. So if you want to see extra videos on this, let me know. If not, I will move on to the next series and start creating um, basically a new Godot uh tutorial series so let me know what you want to see down below in the comments as well um and yeah so if you want to expand upon this do so if you get stuck please feel free to jump in our discord server where you can get help by hopping in our help forum and just just posting your issues and we'll try and help you as best as we can um and yeah that's that's essentially it so let me know and also guys if you want the source code for this game it is on patreon it helps support my channel uh for me to be able to create more content for you guys um and yeah, you also get all the source code from any previous projects that is um, from when I started my Patreon and I actually had the source code for. So that includes Tower Defenses, um, the Go Dots starter tutorial and also this go dot series and there'll be a lot more to come in the future so don't forget to check that out the links are all in the description but that's going to be it for this one guys don't forget to smash that like button if you want to see more don't forget to hit that subscribe button and i will see you in the next one peace out